Welcome back to our video tutorials on Ghostbusters, the Scratch project. So we were there, we had finished the first page. Let's go to Random Ghosts. Your ghost is really easy to catch at the moment because it doesn't move. Can you add code to your ghost so that instead of staying in the same position, the ghost appears at random position on the stage? So the idea is that we're still doing a show and hide, but before showing, this is why, if you remember from the previous video, they were kind of organized the other way around. Hide, then show. It, it doesn't really matter because it loops, but it's just, you know, it's, it will matter because we want to hide, move to a new location, and then show. So we'll just need to add a motion block within our forever loop to just that kind of go to virus. Huh. Now this 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 will make it go to always the same position. So and what we want is some kind of pick two random numbers every thing so it's a random location every time. So let's have a look at what the hint. Right, every time your ghost appears it should go to a random position on the stage, but what how to make the random position? Oh there's a go to random position. Ah uh, and a pick random, yes. Well, it looks like go to random position is more elegant because you just need a single block. Well, but well, if you if you use the blue, the green, sorry, green is operators and those in fact are those technically are functions, and there is a pick random. Yes, pick random between this and this. So I can just add those here. Uh, now you'll remember that the if I just go in, oops, just go to my stage, find backdrop, and add a new backdrop. That's the grid. If I want to figure out what's why, so it's minus two forty to two forty on the x axis, and minus one eighty to one eighty on the y axis. I'm just gonna leave it you know as the of the stage just in case I need to remind myself um, so here in the ghost so for X it's minus two four zero to two four zero and for Y it's minus one eighty to one eighty let's test this Right, it disappears for a second, reappears for a second, and every time it reappears, it reappears in a new location. It seems to, yeah, no, that's good. It's, it's covering the full, the full span of the stage. It does work. Let's see if this is what they kind of had in mind. Yeah, go to random position, or it could look. We we decided to do it like this because I already had to go to X Y, but I think this is much more elegant and and simpler. You might want to pick this one, but you know, obviously the you're in charge if it's your project. Um, I'm going to move straight to challenge more randomness, uh, but if it's a challenge, it's optional, so you don't you don't need to follow through. Right? Can you add code to your ghost sprite to make the ghost wait a random amount of time while it is hidden? Can you use the set size block to make your ghost a randomly larger or smaller each time it appears? Yes, we can totally do that. So wait. That's a control event. You can see it from the color. Orange. Uh, let's put a weight before it appears. Mm -hmm. um, there's already a weight, actually. So uh, we're going to use this one. And here, we're just going to use the operator pick random. And what? Well, this may be between half a second and three seconds. Although I don't know if that's going to work well in decimals because I think pick random is, is really about integers but that might we might be zero to three so it waited a little bit longer before appearing I might actually also spice the um, the amount of time it stays showing I might make that one to two, which was going to make it a little bit easier in that it's, it might stay not hidden, shown for longer, making it easier to go and click on the thing, um, the ghost, to capture it. Um, the other challenge was a set size. Now, there's, there's no hints here. We're going to have to do it all ourselves. 
uh, randomly larger or smaller. So they don't want to set it to a random size, right? We want to make it a little bit larger or a little bit smaller each time it appears. So it's not so much a set size as a change size. Uh, that's again, that's looks. Um, we've got two types of size thing, set size to 100. Or, well, one, of course, if you set size to 100, that's not changing it. <laughs> or change size by. So I suppose we would um, plug it here. So, you know, it, right before it appears, we're going to change its size. Um, and if I use the, the pick random operator and give it a range, let's say, in between minus 20 and 20. Now, remember, this is in percentage. So minus 20% means like it's like one-fifth smaller. So it's not a huge decrease or increase, but it, it will increase or decrease its size based on the previous size, meaning that this is going to, it might get, hmm, is that changing at all? Yeah, size 98. You can actually see the effect it has here, because that's that's a updated live. So your X and Y's random direction. So it's slowly decreasing at the moment. So 70, 74, 64, ooh. Now, we, we have done what they asked, but what they asked what might not be the best game design thing, because they said set size, but then they say make your ghost a randomly larger or smaller, randomly larger or smaller amount each time it appears. That means that because we can only, you know, go down 20 or up 20% from the previous size, now that it's at like 16, it may sort of not, you know, <laughs> it may take some time to get back to the to the normal size, if it ever does at all. So... If we're not really worried about the next random size being um, you know, close to the to the older one, instead of the change size and the I'm going to keep the random, but instead of the change size, I'm going to use a set size two in percentage. And let's say from here, I'm, I'm giving my random again. But now this is a value. This is the value what I want the size to be. So let's say we want it between 50% and 200%. So it can be half the size. Maybe maybe actually. 40%. Um, and yeah, since I'm kind of starting to make to mess around with with that, um, you'll want the um, will want an initialization, as you remember. So at the beginning, outside of the forever loop, so that just happens once at the very beginning, we set size to 100% to initialize it to the correct value. That's it went 180, 164. So the upper bound of our oh, size might be a bit too large because at two hundred percent it's like a very big ghost. Um, same deal. The operation I'd like it to be say maybe between zero and, and one, um, maybe zero and one point five if if that actually works, and maybe one fifty. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's quite all right. I'm happy with that. Let's let's move on. Okay, so that was we've done the two the next two. I'll see you in the next video for the code for catching ghosts. We're going to start clicking and uh, and actually busting those ghosts. See you soon.